Hey there, guys. Testing, testing. Boop. Hey there, guys. Yeah, I can, I can deal with testing. that. Testing. Boop. Hey there, guys. Yeah, I can, I can deal with that. It's a little bit weird. I mean, microphone levels high enough? Not high enough? I don't know. It was a different thing when the mic was like up in my face, you know, but now we put it back down. Ah. Meh. That's my take on it. So anyway, hey there guys, I'm Niblet K. Welcome to another stream. Today I'm actually streaming and starting to do this on maybe a more consistent uh, schedule, so to say. I'm actually working the late shift, so that means this is an early stream. Uh, something I am not really used to doing, but we're gonna try it out. And we're gonna try to go for, you know, an hour, two hours, or something like that, and see how, how it feels until we actually narrow it down to what is, you know, what feels good. So, lately we've been in Hearthstone for a while, but now we're coming going yeah going to come back to uh from breaker and uh let's see if this is still a thing it should actually work sound might be a little bit loud i don't have earbuds so i don't know how that's going to interact oh oh Come on. Hey. Yeah, that thing is always loud. You might be getting a little bit of echoed. Um... <coughs> Sorry. Some echoed sound. Hope it's not too bad. Uh, hope my voice overcomes that. Let's just continue. Lastly, we've been in Marakam, so we literally just finished like a big chunk, chunky portion of the story, and now we're um, in a new map, like literally just started, as you guys can see, we're on the front of the map, uh, we literally just started, so we have all of this beautiful, beautiful thing to go through here to there to there to here and yeah like I said let's just uh, start off right away let's get this loot we got a lot of things hello hello okay so we can't really talk with them What's going to happen here? None too shabby as views go, eh? Oh. Mm, were it not for the howling wind, I'd make a sketch. <laughs> uh, that guy is always funny. Okay, so I see a couple of things already. Here we got a bulletin board, which will give us some more information. So we got some... Uh, uh, troops over here, some loot, uh, and there's a point of interest. And that is pretty much the path we need to go on. Uh, that's new, that's a battle, that's a golden chest. Okay, cool. There are a couple of golden chests here. We actually didn't get all of the golden chests in the last, in the, so in the previous uh, map. We somehow missed one now I'm not entirely sure as to what it is that you need to do to get the last chest maybe there's something that's uh, behind the story uh, thing that maybe if you didn't do you can't get that however I kind of doubt they really you know hide golden chests behind a specific story thing that is very situational but even if they do that, that is actually not a bad thing because it incentivizes you to, you know, 
replay so replayability might be something you know if you want a hundred percent it and besides the golden chests don't really influence you that much as in they give you some borders for uh, Gwent the card game um, so they give you some specific borders and they give you golden versions of the card which if you've purchased Thronebreaker and you are a Gwent player all of the cards that uh, you get from uh, acquiring Thronebreaker you already have as in their normal normal uh, state of the card so you already own all of the cards that you you will get so you don't really get anything new except for the gold, golden premium version of the card so that's pretty much it so it's not such a big loss it's not like it's hindering you from something really awesome right it's just you know more like a bragging rights like look man I got the golden version of this card because I played Chrome Breaker and I got all the golden chests okay cool okay uh, that said ooh. what are those things Neve rode slowly her surroundings interesting to her her ears keen to take in the cacophony of sounds. The sharp whistle of wind rushing past towering peaks. The squeak of wagon wheels rolling over frozen snow. And the roar of beasts. What the? I dare not venture a guess. Hmm. Gabor scratched his chin. An ice troll. Or one of them barbegas of the jowls. These beasts, are they tame? As the dragon? <laughs> not in your life. Fierce horses, every last one. Spring cleaning year past, one year bet my arm clear off. <coughs> hey there, Yatashu. How's it going? Sorry about Nightbot. He has a mind of his own. Okay. The Queen's brow rose in a silent inquiry. All right. You don't quite ken the context. Each spring, with the melting of the snows, a good bit of that filth comes out the ground. That's when Bruver Hoog summons all dwarves for spring cleaning. Bruver Hoog? We cut down as much of the filth as we can, and that means relative. I Meave noted a dark shape darting between positions. Calmly, she drew her sword and brandished it a time or two to warm up her stiff arms. Seems it is our lot to assist you. Yeah, let's warm up a little bit. Lyriums, arms at the ready. The Prepare battle, to let's kill everything. I'm on a high path on killing everything. Okay, we got a story battle with special rules and it's also a shortened battle, so that means one one turn. Do not let Bruver die. Okay, eliminate the Shelmar. Shelmar? Shelmar. Hint. In one fell swoop. Okay. 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 Looks interesting. Well, let's see how the battlefield looks. What are we dealing with? What are we actually dealing with here? Okay, so I can redraw. Uh, that's interesting. I don't know if I need all of these things. So let's see. I don't need field medic. Like I said, these things might prove useful. Uh, Black Rayla is good. That's the fire starter. Uh, that's a marker. That's not too bad. I don't think I need the boost. That could be good enough. Mm. We can try the Jade. Stop standing boss. around like corns on a toe. Get to work. Let's see what happens. So we have every th every three turns on turn start, randomly damage enemies by a portion of Shelmar's current armor. Uh, okay, so he has six armor. Okay, that's pretty high. Um, then move to the other row. 
if on the melee row, damage the highest enemy by this unit's current armor. If on the ranged row, damage the lowest enemy by this unit's current armor. Then set armor to 8. Holy shit boys! Okay. Spawn two Mahakam protectors and move an enemy from the melee to the ranged row. Okay, this looks interesting. Let's start by... Let's mark this unit. We'll catch Here. them all! Uh, let's utilize Meave's ability. Get rid of the armor. Okay. Now we end our turn. Three pyramids. Uh, okay. Next we can. You match fire Don't damage. Say that. Watch Got out! It. It's rolling out way. Zap this thing. Get a bunch of his armor down. Okay. So now we can play Black Rail over here. The uh, and utilize this again. Moves it back up. And this thing might actually kill it. Alright, you got some splaining to do. That was simple, that was simple, that wasn't that hard. I got a lot of damage in my deck, so... As the wails of speared Shalemars died down, the crowd of Mahakaman infantry parted. A dwarf stepped forth, grey as a snow fox, wrinkled as a prune. He walked with difficulty, supporting himself on a battle axe, its two heads dripping blood. This would be our elder in chief, Bruver Hoog. And who might your guests be, Gabor? Meave, Queen of Lyria and Rivia, and her associates in court. Mm -hmm. My regards, elder. I come. You come for something. Coins, my first wager. Fighting bodies, my second. Well, what is it you want? I'm on in the years, I, but I'm not going dotty. Yeah, you menfolk. You got to fall on hard times to remember us dwarves. I've come with a design in mind, I cannot deny. But hear me out and you shall see. <laughs> She's armed! Gabor! Why the devil did you let her in here like that? Armed without a sack or her heat! She has the leaden ring, Elder. Oh, 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 oh. A gift from a king. From Demavand, lassie, I came that already. Trust a man, give him something of value, and you'll go and give it away as easy as a street whore gives away nubs. Oh, what? On it. Sons of humans. Oh, interesting. I've traveled far to see you. Hear me out, I beg you. Yeah, let it be my loss. Come on, heave her away. I, I think that wasn't the best choice, but... Nilfgaard has overrun my realms. It has overrun Edurn. The Blackclads are at the foot of Mahakam. They will seek to overrun your land sooner or later as well. I don't we think he cares act. about that. We must react together. 
Well, there is still time. Time? What do you care a time, lass? Got how many summers to you? Forty, maybe? Had you grown up amongst dwarven folk, at your age you'd be learning to crochet dolls. No more than that. <laughs> I've seen four hundred <coughs> summers come and go. And I've been elder for two hundred. And you know what I've learned in that time? Who? That meddling in your idiot scraps doesn't ever bring any good. Now, on a normal day, I'd have you all thrown clear out of this land I love. That you've the leaden ring, and that grants you the right to hospitality. And here, in Mahakam, laws and rights are sacred. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You may stay in the pass as long as you wish. Young Zigrin will serve as your guide. And once you've tired of the mountains, well, you can the way down into the valleys. I bet you farewell. My lord Elder, with all due respect, we came to your aid. We smote the beasts with you, yet... And who the demons is this one? Count Reynard Odo. Ho ho, Odo, Lodo, Bodo! <laughs> now, you listen and listen well. We didn't ask for aid, and you know why? Because I've my dignity, not like some. Mates and wenches, spring cleaning's done, beast cullen's over, Mount Carbon beckons us home. Follow me! Oh man, dwarves are so cool! Your Grace, be not dismayed. We will find a way. Really? Manage we shall, true. Though damned if I know how. We have none other to whom we can turn, no other land where we can flee. <gasps> really? Let you us can give up that counsel, your grace. Consider together what's to be done. We've yet Redania, Temeria. Your grace, might I draw you aside a wee moment for a job? Reynard, please excuse me. Interesting. Well, what is it you want? I ken the Elder-in-Chief didn't make a good first impression. <laughs> and the second? Is it any better? Mm, to be quite frank, no. <laughs> I'll try elsewise. Not all's lost, trust me. Prover's a stubborn goat, no doubt about it. But a goat to be persuaded. And I happen to ken how. Do tell. Very well, I'm all ears. What must we do to spur Bruverhoog to aid us? Hmm. I might start with the thorn in our side that are beasts. A bigger thorn than most expect. Okay. See, in our never-ending search for gold, we dug deep, too deep, and reached abysses where monsters are born, or however they come to be. Soon as it turns a bit warmer, they crawl out to feed, and there's more every year. What you saw there, the spring cleaning, that's just light yearly upkeep. It didn't go at the source of the blight. Every spring we cull enough so we can live and trade and mine normal like. But there are corridors in the upper valleys midst the peaks where more lie waiting to pounce. So many, for settlements that have done been abandoned. I still fail to see how this relates to myself and Bruva. Well, pretty much we have to do some cleaning of our own and then maybe, maybe he'll be like, Okay, cool, you're, 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 okay, I see. I see what you did there. Let me help. Your Majesty, slay the beasts down to the last and you'll win the hearts of the clans. All of them. And with the clans behind you, why? The Elder will have no choice. He'll bend an ear, treat you serious. You got two sites for which beasts swarm in great numbers. There's Daver's Abyss and an abandoned underground settlement called Burr's Rump. Destroy those, collapse the corridors, problem solved. Yeah, sounds easy, in a way. Y 
Yeah, why hasn't he tended to hmm. murder? You colour the solution as simple and known. Why has Bruva Hoog not gone at the matter? <laughs> you must learn one thing about us dwarves of Mahakam. Customs, traditions, why, we're obsessed. Goes thrice for Bruva. The Elder deliberates weeks on end. And that's in considering if we should not wear suspenders, because they might be through its side, and should thus be forbidden. What? We've a set of laws, the Four Dwarves Codex. One of its tenets says, Dare you not close a corridor once oped? So, no self-respecting dwarf can, nor will, do it. But you... Oh... You're free out with. The laws didn't apply. You have a free hand in sealing the corridors from which the beasts come. Collapse them. Flood them, I didn't ken. But solve the grief once and for all. That's cute. Could be and enough. this, twould suffice? I believe it would. Uh, but, but, but find your other ways to win the heart of a clan or brewer itself. Do so. Can he bring no harm? Hmm. All this sounds rather toilsome, yet... I do favour this to losing what another moon seeking toilsome. out a court where we would at first be welcomed, only later to hear another rebuke. You've my gratitude, Gabor. You've shown me a way. Very well. Let us think on these beasts. See what's to be done. Okay, so do we have, like... Options. We need to close two things. Don't exactly know where they are. Okay, here's our first main quest. Okay. And I believe we need to get all the way up there. Okay. Go up around here? No, no, no. Nope. Okay. I've come to the conclusion your elder in chief is not fond of guests. Fond? That's near a quarter of it. He hates them with seething passion. But you're damned lucky. Why is that? Legend, didn't he? Mahakam was cordoned off completely through the outside world for many a long year. Clans finally forced Bruva to at weird. least let in peddlers and emissaries. Okay, let's see what are other things that we can build. So we got all of these. We could actually do this. I don't think it's worth it. Command tent. Oh, that's not bad. Decrease the gold cost of creating units by 25%. Okay. Enable you to trade gold for wood, blah, blah, blah. Uh, armory. Strays 10. Oh, that's actually good. That's pretty good. We got a workshop here. Wagon. Uh, wagon burn. Forager. I don't care that much about these things. I mean, I don't use those things very, very much. I mean, the Rivian Sapper might be good. I'm it by two. The Rivian Sappers look pretty good. I mean. I would like to get that, but we don't actually have Rivian Sappers in our deck for now. 
Hmm. Let's do this first. It's pretty cheap. Armor. Ooh, that takes up a lot of wood. Wow. Wow, now that takes up a lot of wood. Okay, so what was the other one? Okay, stray cavalry and stray slingers go up. Uh, so I think this is the one that I want right now. And command tent. We got our new stuff here. Trace a spala. Those are actually good. Damage a unit by five if it's on a roll with fire damage all units on it by five. Kind of like that. Let's see. Isabel. Okay, Isabel is decent. I think we might end up cutting her. Oh, we got stray bombers. Okay. We got the slingers. We got the scythemen. We got arbalists. Stray's cavalry. Okay, those comes. Those guys come in on turn start. That's pretty good. <sighs> I take one field medic out. The strays of Spala look interesting to me. Could take out the linear and arbalist. The Scythemen, I feel like I don't use them as much. How much does one of these things cost? No, let's make one. Let's make one. Put it in there. Let's put one, one only. Now what was the other one? Rivian Sapper. How much do you cost? Sappers seem nice. Okay, we're gonna go with that. Good to see the queen. We shall return we, to this we, no we We've spoken with everyone. I mean, not much I want to do. And we can see we have eight golden chests in this map alone. We're actually close to one over here. And you guys can see there's a golden chest over there. So. Let's, uh, let's get going then. Walking on thin ice, ice. How do I get up there? Okay, I can already see some interesting creatures. Standard battle, okay. It should be good. So what do I mean? Boost allies at random by the total damage taken during this battle. Okay, I can take one of those. I don't think I need that. Okay, one 
fire starter. Something start, something with armor, so beasts. Give a random unit for armor on round and units with armor gain resilience. Ooh. Okay. Okay, let's uh You mad? Don't shake that! Firing things up. these things back into the hand because I think those are going to come in handy next to this. Knock out one of your teeth. Three cards. Oh. Interesting. That thing becomes. Is it used to be something else? I hate those things always summoning a bunch of stuff. Deal with this. I can play. Ah, should have listened to me, old lady. doing something. Thing. 
<laughs> Wait, you're serious? a good one I'm actually gonna keep oh, this entire hand so what do I want to do first okay, first things first let's Watch set your everything on fire <laughs> On turn start, increase counter by one and damage a random enemy by two. That push multiply this unit's counter by three and damage a unit by that amount. Did something, but not too much. Ooh, there's armor. I hoped we could solve this some other way. No, don't you dare kill her. smell a leak. I don't want it to have armor. Whew. 
was pretty tight. Pretty tight. Oh, people of the hills, we hereby order five barrels of curd beef, forty links of juniper sausage, five sides of pork, ten dozen goose eggs, twenty sacks of rye flour. Payment issued in gold. Warning: goods must be tightly packed so as not to attract monsters. Okay. Sure. And another border. Cool. Dragon's eye. Okay, we got another post over here. Uh, okay, point of interest. Apparently, I need to go down and then come back upwards. Oh, we got a piece of another card. <gasps> yeah. Huh. That's interesting. Hey there, little dwarf. Quiet, wench. Or you'll scare the fish off. Crevens, Trout was already nipping at the bait. Then you came along and frightened it off. Duval shice. Duval shice. Duval shice. Duval shice. Duval. Duval shice. Yeah, we kind of pissed him off, but oh, whatever. Is that all there is over here? Yep. Looks like it. Just the little Duver shice. Duvel shice! How do I get up there? Hello. The dwarves are demanding a pretty sum, but their steel's worthy of any crown. No offense, meant. The Rivian blades don't hold a candle to their Mahakaman cousins. Their elders just a tad. Eccentric. <laughs> Eccentric. No offense, mate. The Rivian. Okay, let's explore. Um... Oh, we got a bulletin board over here. Markers added. Puzzle, puzzle, loot. Okay, we'll deal with the puzzles in a moment. How is this possible? Madness. Pure madness. Everyone looks exactly the same. How am I supposed to remember so many corridors, shafts, and chambers? How... Have to keep moving and then what? I don't remember. Treasure? But what kind? like I think we got everything here now let's see let's do this puzzle use your leader's ability hit look into the eye of your foe what separates you is but only a mirror okay stone and swap it with the stone on its left if there is none move it to the rightmost place on the other row this card cannot be played Choose the 
the stone and swap it with the stone on its left. Wow. This is but a mirror. Did we fuck up? Okay, that looks good. already good so I think I already just need to do this it should be that should be it right ah! hey I have exactly everything Guessing I need to have these things remain the same. So if I put everything up and then place this down. Change a couple of things. Uh, that thing needs to go there. Okay. That thing needs to change. Ah! Oh, that's good already. Now these two need to change. Ah! Hey, hey! The old swaparoo! Work! Oh, we got a card. We actually got out on the other end. Interesting. I would have thought there were two puzzles. And they were intertwined. Damage all enemies by... Oh, that's actually not bad. I 
the jade one is not bad. Oh, yeah. We're gonna try it out. That's pretty much all I can do here. Okay. Let's cross the... Oh. So let's cross the bridge and see what that's all about. Hello there. Ooh. I'll buy the map. Was I not there before? It look like that. I mean, that's another mine shaft. That's another mine shaft. No mine shafts there. No, none there. Some more around there. Nothing really there. Um, this looks weird. This looks weird. Oh, it looks like a pit. Okay, let's see if it's back here. noted a crowd of dwarves. There were several dozen, many holding baskets brimming with dried sausages, soft, puffy pretzels, and jugs of frothy beer. What is this gathering? She asked Gabor. These folk? They're the parents of youngsters who are to return today from the Drekthag. Drekthag. Gabor proceeded to explain that the Drekthag was a trek upon which the local dwarves would embark when they reached maturity. During this year-long voyage, young folk would taste of life beyond their home. Yet if they failed to return on time, they would be stripped of all rights and privileges accorded to Mahakam's natives. Oh. See, in recent years, young folk's blood's been boiling on account of the strict laws in force here. Gabor added. So, we send them out. Let them taste life in the lowlands. Once they've learned for themselves what it's like to live among humans, they come back ain't likely to complain. Customarily, only a few dwarves ever decided to remain in the valleys for good. That year, however, was different. Deadline's the Mora. And 40 Drekthagers still have not returned. Their parents now worried if some misfortune had not befallen them. The Mahakaman Guard had sent out patrols to the near reaches okay. of the valleys. They returned not having seen anything distressing while the humans living at the foot of the Massif had been largely unwilling to talk. The guard captain, a dwarf with a fiery red beard, removed his helmet, wiped the sweat from his brow, and addressed me. Your Majesty, we need to find our youth. Perhaps you'd be willing to go out and search. Human folk are more like to tell you if they saw anything out of the ordinary of late. Naturally, there'd be something in it for you too. Sure. One could I'll say I out. myself have lost a son. Meave gripped the captain's hand firmly. And I know well the pain that comes. I shall do all in my might to spare you at least that. Meave set off, the hopeful gazes of the dwarven parents bidding her farewell. The queen sent a scout ahead. Sometime later, she heard his horn. Three blasts, 
Two short, one long. An ambush! Neve expected to combat beasts or robbers. Yet upon her force descended warriors with squirrel tails attached to their helms. Squire tail. Squire. Are we gonna fight against dwarves? Wait. I got some uh, fire for you. I hope. I hope. Yeah. The Scoia Teller of Plague. Every turn of the night, and boost self by one and fighting frost is on the road. A time to sow, and a time to die. Or no. Right! Come on! Yeah. Who's bust? Shit, 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 shit. things I don't need. I don't have that many things. I don't think I need this one. Oh, 
that's good. It's pretty good. I might actually lose the round still, you know. That can still happen. Uh, let's just play our normal game. Hi. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Let's play this could hurt. Over here. Also utilize our ability. Please stop that. Damage that thing. By however much we can. Well, if anyone's got any hooch left. Yeah. Now we get our fire guy back. I'm gonna do that and hope it dies. Yes! That's pretty good. I shall not fail! That thing is pain in my ass. Tell me you jest. Yeah, that's pretty good. Watch your heads! <laughs> Start applying pressure yet once more. None man. shall tread on us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what do we do here? We do this. I bit the white of an eye from our falling away. First we do this. Then we move these things here. Now we can actually get those things off. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah! That was actually bad. Nevertheless, still. As long as he doesn't have too many units on the board, should be good enough. Some other way. No. What those Never things had your knee caps broken. Shit. That was not the way I planned it. One. As soon as the battle had come to an end, the prisoners were brought before the queen. All, without exception, were dwarves, and all looked to be youthful dwarves. Mystery solved, muttered Meave. In fact, these were the missing Drekthagas. Instead of returning home, they had enlisted with guerrillas fighting for non-human rights. But what had prompted so drastic a decision? Wait, what? Oh shit, no. I was impatient. Wanted badly to turn 50. 
I couldn't wait to see human cities. It seemed uh, Tretigor, Novigrad, said one of the dwarven prisoners while pressing a bandage to a bleeding wound. And you know the welcome that awaited me there? I was spit upon and called names. I saw ghettos, massacres. And how was I to go back to the mines after that? We must fight while we still can. Before the humans come to cut us down, we must tell the rest of ours the same. Pull all Maha come into the fight. Meave's soldiers stood waiting for her to protest, to accuse the dwarf of lying. But the queen could not pretend she did not understand why the dwarf had taken up arms. Without entering into a discussion, she ordered the prisoners taken to be tried and judged by their kin and elders. Yep, that seems the right thing Along to do. her way, Meave heard cries. She rushed to see what the ruckus was about. Upon seeing Black Rayla spattered with blood, she expected the worst. Reynard could only confirm the Queen's fears. She entered the wagon unnoticed, the wagon carrying the prisoners. She then cut their throats, one by one. Forty dwarves? Alone? They were shackled. They could not defend themselves. Oh, come on. Rayla had nothing to say in her defense. In point of fact, she exuded pride. Mahakam had been free of Scoyatel till now. We'd have done all a questionable favor by bringing back a wagon full of enraged youth wearing squirrel tails. They'd have posed as martyrs for a just cause. They'd have shown off their scars and persuaded the clans to make war on humans. All that deserved to be nipped in the bud. Damn. She, she really doesn't take no for an answer when it comes to Scoyatel. Meave could see the blood rushing to Reynard's head. When he finally spoke, it was clear he was holding the reins of his emotions, preventing himself from exploding with some difficulty. Your Grace, we must banish her, drive her off. This was in no way ordinary insubordination. This was a grave crime. Your Majesty, you know I rarely meddle in your affairs, said Isbo. Yet for this, I cannot remain silent. This woman must go. <sighs> Shit. Shit, what the what? This is a hard choice. I neither accept nor condone what Rayla did. Yet, there is a war on, and she is one of the best warriors I have under my command, said the Queen. Naturally, I shall punish her, but I cannot banish her. Reynard opened his mouth to say something, but upon spotting Rayla's scornful smile, he turned on his heel and marched off without a word. He was later seen in the mess tent, drinking alone, his eyes fixed on the bottom of his tankard. The Lyrians remained silent Jesus throughout Christ. their return. Upon spying their downcast eyes and somber means, the dwarves awaiting the return of their offspring dispersed to their homes, leaving baskets full of treats in the snow. No one asked any questions of me. Luckily so, as the queen would not have known how to answer. Mom, I've come to tell you I must leave your army. What? What? Why? Against my better judgment, I joined you to heal your wounded. I realize now that was a mistake. What exactly do you mean? What you did runs counter to all my beliefs. You had your reasons. And have them still, I know. Yet I've no desire to abet them. Okay. I'd feel shame to lend a hand. So the choice was either to keep Isbel or keep Black Rayla. What can I do? Is there anything that would make you stay? No, ma'am. Farewell. 
I pretty much made my choice. So. Bye, Isabel. So be it. Good luck and Godspeed, Isabel. Oh, this game is rough. Didn't he find nothing? Not a trace. What could have happened? Didn't he find nothing? Didn't he find? <laughs> Shit, morale is down. Well, luckily, there's a shrine here. That was some. That was some. Some. Something else. Damn. The Queen noted a building with unusually lavish ornamentation, including shining bronze roof tiles and glistening rock crystal window panes. Mm, An important clan dwelled there, Gabor explained. The Brecon Riggs. Could you introduce me? Meave asked. Perhaps I can convince them to intercede with Bruver on my behalf. The clan head, Ivor, invited Meave to an exquisite feast. But when she broached the subject of the war raging just outside Mahakam's borders, the dwarf changed the subject at once. Looking around the interior, Meave quickly understood why. The walls were ordained with Nilfgaardian tapestries and rugs. Gifts from friendly Imperial envoys, no doubt. Meave prepared to leave, convinced she had wasted her time, when someone clasped her shoulder and pulled her into a darkened room. Her kidnapper turned out to be... A young dwarf, female, it seemed, dressed in her nightshirt. With a beard. She introduced herself as Ivor's daughter, Eudora Breckenriggs, and openly admitted she had eavesdropped on Meave's dinner conversation. Listen, me dad's stubborner than an old goat, but I'll convince him to help you for a wee favour, that is. Mm-hmm. What? I need some shaving cream. I want you to steal something from the clan archive. Historiae Mahakamorum, tis called. See, me da won't let me betroth me sweetikin Zoltan. Says the Codex forbids marrying a dwarf who's left the mountains. But there's precedent. Just such a case described in that document. If I can show it to da, he'll have to change his mind. Me felt sympathy for Eudora and wanted to help her, especially considering the favor Eudora could do her in return. But she fully realized if her attempt to break into the archive ended badly, it would result in a tremendous scandal Bruva Hoog would not soon forget. Listen, I wish all the best for you and Zeltan. Uh, Zoltan. Eudora corrected. Yes, right. Zoltan. In any case, it's too risky. I've much to gain from the support of your clan, but if the mission ended in failure, I'd lose even more. Eudora shrugged and returned to her bedroom. Meave resumed her interrupted journey, wondering if the dwarf would find some other way to betroth her beloved Zoltan. Sorry, Zoltan. I can't get mixed in this. Ooh. nice to have there sorry but I can't I cannot do that Bonnie Holmes eh just slightly different for those straw covered kludges of yours you're no cold without a beard what are you poking me for ah scrounging for coin no doubt righty then take this pouch and kindly get off my arse <laughs> Bonnie Holmes, eh? Nice. Ah, get thunder and do! I told you to hold your horses and you'll shake the hitch loose! Oh, now you're a bleeding expert, are you? 
You overloaded the damn cart, that's why it's busted. A wagon lay screwed across the middle of the road. Behind it stood others, some loaded with gold, jewels, and other valuables, others groaning under barrels of pickled meat. Each dwarf had his own theory about how the accident had come about, and thundered it out to all and sundry, peppered with choice invectives. An odd caravan, Meave said. They don't look like merchants. Nay, nee, they ain't, Gabor answered. Dwarves of the Ferens clan, carrying gifts for the Drake. Remember Keltilus? When he took Roost here, Ferences fought him for near a century. Then the dragon got weary of fighting, and they realized he weren't going nowheres, so they cut a deal. He didn't bother them. They give him what he needs. Well, well. And these offerings they send often? Every week. Excuse me, not to separate them lads, or they tear out each other's beards. Hey there! <laughs> cool your idiot heads! <laughs> Gabor managed to douse his brethren's fiery tempers. But the wagon still lay across the road, blocking all traffic. Queen, said Xavier, it is an easy repair. I have the tools, the parts. Need but your permission. Of course. Go see what can be done. Xavier did indeed make quick work of the problem. Well, let's see Within moments, the wagon was rolling smoothly down the road, good as new. Well, shaft me, your highness, said one of the dwarves. Your engineer's morning, got a morning there. stewed meat, but he kens his trade. That's for certain. I'll convey your words to him. Or at least part of them. Uh, me and the lads will be on our way. Now, How's it going? But first, take this. Bag gold by way of thanks. Nice. Thank you. Meave said, accepting the surprisingly heavy pouch. In wartime, every copper counts. The dwarf bowed in parting, shook the snow off his beard, then rejoined his caravan. Within a few moments, the wagons had disappeared around the bend. Was that maybe a mistake taking the gold? I don't know. It's just a little gold, and besides, I did help him out. There we go. What you got in store for me? Oh! Sure. This is something new. Now I'm dealing with two cards. That's interesting. Also, I see something around here. <laughs> okay. That's pretty nice. Hello. Okay, let's see. Where are we on the map? Oh. Oh. Okay, that's just uh, the um, trader. We don't want to trade with him right now. That seems to be a, an interesting cave over there. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's uh, keep on going forward. Get her everything we can. There's another post. Okay. What else do we have here? Okay. A pillar of smoke rose above the mountains, a drake. and a sooty aroma filled the air. Fire, Gabor said, then took a deep sniff. Perhaps a bolt struck some barren trees? No, Meave said curtly. I know that scent too well. All Edurn reeked of it. It's the smell of burning homes. The Lyrians quickened their gait. Soon they saw the town fully aflame and a roaring, furious dragon above it. That's your Keltons, Gaston asked, shielding his eyes from the sharp glare emanating from the city. You were right. Perfectly harmless. Then again, was get his knickers in a bunch, the dwarf said, grabbing his axe from his belt. Queen, we got to make haste to the rescue. Ooh. 
what? But is this because Rainers, we got the gold? called out. Have our men wet their cloaks for a modicum of fire protection. We move as soon as they're done. Your grace, they are but common soldiers to fight a dragon. I know, but we must help them, or at least try. While Raynard went to pass I got the this. order, Meave turned to Gabal. This dragon, has it any weakness? Fear not, said the somber dwarf. Set that fondness for raw meat. Meave nodded and swallowed dryly. Despite the cold, she felt sweat pour down her scalp. Stifling her fear, Meave gave the order to attack, and her soldiers rode into the flaming city. From up close, Keltalis looked even more terrifying. Though enormous, he moved with shocking agility, like a lizard scurrying over sand. With one swing of his paw, he snapped the necks of three dwarves, then bisected a fort with a powerful bite. After that, he turned his attention to the Lyrians. More of you! He said, twisting his bloody moor into a horrifying smile. God! What's up with him anyway? Eliminate Keltalus. It's a shortened battle, so... Let's see what we're dealing with. Start spawn fire on the opponent's side. After 15 turns on 30 start, move the opponent's side. Move to the opponent's side and damage all units there by one. Okay. Abolition, right. your command. Start doing as much damage as I can. Have to kill the dragon. It has to be possible. Supply fire. Watch your heads. <laughs> is weird as yeah Wasn't he supposed to move? Every turn I'm trying to start to kill this unit by 10.
He's vulnerable. We must strike now. Yeah, well, not as easy. And just when you thought things were about to get dull. to the dragon's all-consuming fire or to its flesh-rending claws. Yet their sacrifice was not in vain. Together with the dwarves, they were able to grievously wound Keltilis, forcing him to flee. The howls of the wounded monster rang throughout the valley. Ha! <laughs> That's right, howl, you scurvy snake! Shouldn't they have attacked us, eh? Damn fuel lizard! Fuel lizard. Meave, that's Vavrenik, elder of the town and all the Ferences. My regards and condolences. Eh, tain't so bad. If nay for ye, wouldn't there be a stone left unrubbled? To be honest, when I caught wind some human queen come to Mahakam looking for aid, I said a crocus would sprout twixt my cheeks afore I'd vote aye on that. <laughs> Gonna be a fear to look in my breeches after, but change my mind. After what I saw today, what ye did for us, you've the support and undying gratitude of all Ferences. Nice. Thank you. Faced with the Nilfgaardian peril, that means a great deal. Forgive me for interrupting this tear tugging scene of interracial reconciliation, but I can't hold back any longer. Favrenik, double chase. What happened? Why'd Keltless attack? I can as much as ye, meaning squat diddly. Just flew up, started spewing flames, half the tune lit up in a flash. Sheep shank. 300 years of being a good neighbor. What's done's done. Got to think about the future. The Drake's just taking a breather. Gotta finish him off for his regained form. Meaning we haven't no much time. He heals like an alchemist's pup. And the nearest guards are <laughs> like an miles alchemist's away. pup. He'll be up flying again before they get here. Aye, that's what I thought. <clears throat> Perhaps your grace, you'd. Uh... What? Jest you must. I can you're tired through the fight, didn't want to risk casualties, etc. But remember, the beast sleeping on a bed of gold and rubies. All belonging by right to Brother, of course. But if a uh, quibbling sum wandered off, he'd no notice. Oh. <laughs> this guy sounds like Muradin's family, yeah. <laughs> They're all really cool. I admit that does alter my calculations. Besides, Let's go the dragon kill the was badly drink. wounded. Putting it featherly, blood poured out of him like a leaky bladder. Just needs a coup de gras. Coup de gras. Fine. I'll do the deed. Can you see the light? Oh, hey, Vavrenek, Vavrenek. This lady's gonna make your rump a regular crocus garden. <laughs> Aye. Queen's doing us a great service. One that'll profit us both. It will. So, where is Keltilus's lair? Right through here. It's a vast cavern. You can't miss it. Meave bid farewell oh, the, to Vavrenek and set the out on her okay. way. Did her way lead to the dragon's lair, you ask? Shh. 
Let's not spoil the surprise. Wait, what? I'm sorry, what? Wait, what? First, we scavenge around and see what we find. Then we got to go. Trust a body, then what do you get? A singe bahuki? Brown, red, gold. Every dragon's a right bastard. Wait! I'm coming with you! Gonna beat that scaly bastard so hard he'll shoot fire out his ass. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, point of interest. Looks decent enough. He'll shoot fire up his ass. Let's go on a prayer. Have our troops really motivated. Oh, oh. Almost missed that. Okay, and there's nothing else here, I guess, I reckon. Let's do this. Keltalis Lair was indeed impossible to miss. As would stand to reason, for any space capable of containing a dragon must be enormous. The Lair's Moor, a black triangle cut out of a vast plain of snow, loomed from afar. Confirming the dragon's presence was the powerful odor emanating from it. One of sulfur and blood. Well then, Gascon said. Ready to become a legendary dragon slayer? Hell yeah, bring it off. My father off said, never should you count pelts till the hunt is through. Meave said, dismounting her horse. It's all the more true when you hunt dragons. He's wounded, yes, but one puff of flame, and we shall be not legends, but corpses. Leave all thoughts of foolhardy bravery behind. The Lyrians crept across the dragon's threshold. They walked single file, shields raised, watched by bats hanging from that the sea. Peltilus lay curled up on a bed of diamonds and gold coins turned red from his blood. Seeing how he strained merely to lift his massive head, Meave knew the dragon no longer posed any threat. Come to finish what, what your poison began? <sighs> The monster croaked hoarsely. Fine. Do it then. Okay, this looks awkward. Keltilis turned over, exposing his vulnerable underbelly, and waited calmly for the fatal blow. Wait. Meave said, dropping her sword. What poison? <laughs> Keltilis laughed while squeezing his bleeding side in pain. So they didn't tell you? Lousy munchkins. <sighs> hey! Watch your tongue! Gabor yelled. Sage! I didn't care anything about it. Keltilis looked the Lyrians over mistrustfully with his snake-like eyes, then began to tell his tale. The caravan Meave had met on the road was different to the others. This time, Keltilis's meat had been pickled in a special brine, one spiked with poison. As the dragon lay curled up in pain, Ferenc dwarves entered his lair and smashed his head. So if I understand correctly... Meave interrupted. You're female. Correct. Same as you. <sighs> as if on command, all Lyrian eyes turned to Gabor. Can you look at me? We didn't peek under his... Eh, uh, half... Eh, uh, it's... Deal. If I may, Reynard interjected. These revelations about Keltilis' sex are undeniably fascinating. But I'm more curious why the Ferenc is stooped to such a dishonorable deed. That's easy enough to guess, Meave said. They were afraid the dragon would soon demand more tribute to feed its young. 
so they decided to strike preemptively. Ah, to the Ferrance's misfortune, they delivered two smaller dose of poison. Infuriated at the sight of the broken eggs, the dragon gathered its strength and flew to the nearest town. Meave saw for herself what happened then. And now, it was up to her to decide how this story would end. The dragon had killed dozens, perhaps even hundreds, but had been provoked first by the dwarves' heartless cruelty. Did it thus deserve death or mercy? Oh, shit. Man, these choices are tough. We're gonna kill the dragon. I understand your pain, Meave said. But nothing can justify the massacre you wrought. Nothing? And what would you have done in my place? Snorted the dragon. Pen a letter of complaint to Elder and Chief Oak. They killed my children! <laughs> I'd have done the same, the Queen replied, not hesitating a moment. I'd have sought revenge, knowing what punishment I'd earn. The monster looked Meave in the eyes a long while, then dropped its head. I have no more strength to fight. I have no more reason to fight. Do as you see fit. Oh, crap, man. You're giving me another oh man this sucks I don't really want to kill the dragon but I need the dwarves Meave raised her sword high and swept it down with enormous strength cutting the scaled belly in twain the monster bellowed out a long roar and writhed its tail, scattering diamonds everywhere. Then grew still. Keltalis, the last red dragon between the Great Sea and the Fiery Mountains, had breathed his last. Oh, shit. I did. There followed a strange silence. No one cheered. No one clapped. That was... Gascon said, the first to break the silence. Not terribly epic. What'd you expect? Gabor said, arms akimbo. Fanfare and fireworks? They're mounting to quake! They <laughs> up and died. What else would they do? I am certain, Your Grace, Reynard said, that the poets will endow this moment with the appropriate splendor. I'm sure they will, the Queen said, sheathing her sword. For they are liars. Hmm. <laughs> So I'm pretty sure we could have gotten different rewards from this quest specifically. Well, we got a trophy. I'm curious if 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 if, if I would have left the dragon alone, would have I actually gotten a dragon in my army? The queen told her soldiers to gather a part of the dragon's treasure, small enough not to bring down the wrath of Bruva Hoog but large enough to fully compensate the Lyrian's losses. And Meave gained the title of Dragon Slayer. Though she rarely made much mention of it. <sighs> Let's see what the trophy is about. Permanent resilience. Every teeth. Every, every time I want to, like say something really fast especially like every three turns my tongue just gets stuck on it on that is a re 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 you know okay every three turns on turn start damage all enemies on the melee row by two Try it out. Oh, 
glitched out a little bit. So we did this quest. So we're free of this. Now we just gotta cross the bridge and start seeing what do we have here. Still a long path away from what it is that we actually need to do. Oh, this looks very safe indeed. Oh! Lenskuth Spitzkop Dubelgaf Hipponix Slosa. What? Cloak clocks. Booties for chickens. <laughs> Okay, that's cute. Small little village, eh? Meave squinted, the better to see the scene. Several dozen dwarves had gathered on the cliff overlooking the chasm. All were turned towards a ramp, at the peak of which stood a barrel. What is that gathering about? Asked the queen. Have we a feast day? Nay, answered Gabor <coughs> grimly. It is an execution. Oh. A hairy head peeked out of the barrel. The long, pointy nose and ears left no doubt that it belonged to a gnome. The first Meave had ever seen in her life. Help! <laughs> Save me! The gnome yelled. They aim to kill me! Cast me in the chasm! Shut your maw! Barked the dwarf standing next to him, who then shoved the gnome inside the barrel and covered it with a lid. Your crimes! The sheer weight of it, hey! No lighter punishment is fitting! The other gathered dwarves nodded approvingly. Two gripped the barrel, lay it on its side, then lifted it to cast in the chasm, paying the thumping from inside it no heed. Ah. Uh. I'm in their land. I have no business questioning anything they're doing to this extent. The queen mounted up and squeezed her mare with her knees to urge her forward. Soon after, she heard a loud wailing cry, the sound of wood splintering, a hundred dwarves cheer, and then quiet. Dare say it was the bonniest flight I've ever seen. A perfect parabola. Hmm. Maybe I could have saved it. Oh boy. Did I do good or did I do bad? I guess I'll never know. Maybe I'll save him in a second place. Just crawl out for spring cleaning. Remember, if you pass a snail on route to the mine, share a wee bite with him. Never, ever whistle in the mines. Now hold on. Pour you some hooch first. Makes for merrier marching when things get frosty. Okay. Uh, puzzle. Battle. Loot. The blizzard's blowing in. Your grace, perhaps we'd best pitch camp and wait for clear weather. Didn't a bad idea. Said we might be waiting a week. Then we march on. We've no time to waste. While we ride to and fro begging aid, Nilfgaard grows in power. We must obtain reinforcements as quickly as possible and liberate our home. But first, I see another lizard. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Standard battle. Time to kill. Uh. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah, 
this thing? Maybe... Um, oh, okay. Yeah, sure. It's a standard battle, so I might need... Did I mention it? Those fucking things... So what do I need? Let's play this guy first. Ah, listen to me, old lady. Do that. Now it's gonna summon those things, which is fine. Well, let's start. Oh, that thing did some damage. Is on! That thing has resilience. Ha! Oh, claw. Oh, hey, morning there, Fritz. I'll be done in just a gif. Just when you thought things were about to get dull. thing has no 
does five damage. This might actually help me resurrect Firestarter. I'm gonna play this artist will be reaping this guy first in order to boost it by a gazillion. Try to get that fire starter. What do you want of me? Nope, oh, didn't get me. Spirits willing and how much? Well, that's okay. Boots are killing me. I can boost these guys. That's 14 points. Thing about slings, they hide well. These that thing is going to summon another thing. This guy, those. Oh, we need to mark this thing. Kinda sucks because those things are gonna. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we will conclude today's streaming journey. And I'll see you guys tomorrow, same time. We're gonna go for a little bit more, and we're gonna progress with the story and see where where, where it's gonna take us. It's definitely hard. The choices that, you know, we had to take in this specific part of the story they are like some of the harder ones up until now this game is really pushing your buttons <laughs> to the limit but yeah uh, save and exit to main menu like i said see you guys tomorrow bye bye peace out uh, what that's the peace sign right this is rock rock on <laughs>